My name is Greg Dewey. I'm the president of Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and I welcome you to Dialogues with Dewey. In this segment, we are going to be talking about innovative classrooms. The Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has an initiative called the Beyond Practice Ready Initiative that we're using to enhance the student experience. Part of that initiative is the construction of three new classrooms that will enable active learning. With me today, I have uh, Jennifer McVeigh Dyke, who's the Executive Director of Innovative Learning, and I have Gina Garrison, who is the Associate Professor of Pharmacy Practice. So let me ask you, Jennifer, uh, how has education changed, and wh why do we actually need to have a new type of classroom? Sure, so education has changed for a number of reasons, but what's really influencing that right now is rapid changes in technology, and our learners are bringing those technologies into the classroom, and they're expecting that they're going to be using those. But we've also got employers who are telling us that they need their students uh, able to really work in collaborative environments, to use uh, lifelong learning skills, to constantly renew uh, their uh, abilities within the workplace. And so that really uh, sets the stage for a different type of classroom. And I think that's where those innovative classrooms come into play. So it's almost as much about expectation as about pedagogy. Absolutely. It's a mix of both. We've got learners who really want to use those tools and they really want to be engaged with the content, but we also have technology that really influences the way um, that we as instructors and uh, even the students can interact with one another as well. So Gina, you're in the classroom. This generation of students, do they learn in a different way? How do they compare with past generations? I think I've definitely seen an evolution of how students approach learning, and there's some um, histor historical ways that they're the same. They still need a lot of memorization, for example, in the health sciences, but I think what's changed a lot is that uh, the millennial generation, if you will, really prefers multimodal approaches to teaching and learning, processes where they can mix it up every once in a while, mm -hmm. every 15 minutes, let's say, doing something more interactive, um, using the actual technologies that they have in front of them, doing group work. Um, collaborative learning and problem solving as opposed to just rotely sitting in chairs and rows and listening to lecture for 50 minutes at a time. I think it yeah. really engages them to think about how they'll uh, remember and apply knowledge right. once they graduate. Right. Well, you used an in interesting phrase, you said mixed it up. And so Jennifer, when you think about the role of technology in the classroom, is it about mixing it up? I mean, how do you use technology in these classrooms? So uh, it is definitely about mixing it up. And one of the things I always say about using technology in the classroom is that it should be secondary. And the way that you're using it should actually almost be invisible to the learner um, in, in, uh, in the classroom as well as even outside of the classroom. So when we're talking about um, using technology, we're really looking at how can we bring that content to life so we could have learners actually um, working on uh, patient simulation in small groups within the classroom. We could have students outside of the traditional classroom and um, some folks in, let's say, the Vermont campus, some folks in Albany, and they're working back and forth with one another with the computer screen in front of them, but they're manipulating something and the students in Albany are actually experiencing that on their end as well. And when you think about the traditional classroom, it's really not possible to easily break mm -hmm. into those groups, right. to pull those technologies into the classroom. And again, that's where we're having to rethink what we're doing so that we can provide those flexible opportunities, but we also don't know what the classroom will look like in three years. So yeah. three years from now, five years from now, and if we can design a classroom that will flex and move with that, then we're gonna get much more out of uh, what we're trying to do. Well, that sounds kind of exciting, actually. So you use an uh, interesting phrase, you say that technology has to be invisible to the learner. That puts the burden back on the faculty, right? The yeah. faculty has to be the one that make it invisible to the learner. So Gina, uh, I've been in the faculty for years, I've been using my same notes, I've been lecturing. What's the incentive to change? Well, I think a lot of times faculty will think about the end in mind. So if your particular course has goals where students are uh, expected to perform, perhaps with some 
rationalization of an answer and working through different options and how to communicate that, then it's wonderful to be able to think about how the teaching and the learning can build up towards those bigger goals as opposed to just rote memorization, which is a part of what we do in the health sciences, but it's not a matter of just that low level recall that we're looking for. I think it's a matter of how can we get students to remember what they learned and to use it. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Jennifer. We've been talking here on Dialogues with Dewey about innovative classrooms with Jennifer McVeigh Dyke, who's the Executive Director of Innovative Learning, and Gina Garrison, Associate Professor of Pharmacy Practice. We'll see you again next time on Dialogues for Dewey.